during and shortly before the Second World War. We associate the most prominent leaders of the National Socialist and the fascist movements as Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini. The two were very close friends and regularly met, and it was said that following Mussolini's execution, Hitler was hit with the realisation that the war was lost and he was devastated. Together the two formed an alliance, initially involving Italy and Nazi Germany in the Axis powers, but there was also growing fascist and national socialist movements emerging in different countries. Even America had the Bund, which was a German-American Nazi organisation, and its goal was to promote Nazism in America. However, the Netherlands found themselves occupied during World War II, and this shocked many, as they were initially considered neutral. But within the country, a political party and movement, known as the NSB, or the National Socialist Movement in the Netherlands, was having some success, and had been since the 1930s. In charge of this was Anton Mussert, a man who collaborated with the Germans during the conflict, and was named the leader of the Dutch people. But as the Second World War came to an end, he was captured and arrested by the Allies, and was then convicted of treason. Following this, he was executed. So join us today as we look at the compelling execution of Anton Mussert, the fascist leader of the Netherlands. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Anton Mussert was born in May 1894, and he was the fourth child of the Mussert family, of which there would be five. His father was a head teacher, and through his job the family were very well respected within their village. His father Johannes was a man who was highly thought of by those outside of his family. To the outsiders he seemed to be a caring man, who was there to always help his family learn. However, he regularly beat his children to establish his authority over them. His wife and Anton's mother, Frederica, was a snob, and she believed she was above her station, and inside of their marriage they often had lots of arguments. Anton's brother joined the army and also became an officer. As a young boy, Anton Mussert was a loner, and he was short, which attracted bullies to mock him, and his deepest interests focused on history, and in particular the history of the Netherlands. He was not an amazing student at secondary school, and he wanted to follow his brother's footsteps in the military, and wanted to become a naval officer, but because of his height he was rejected. His father Johannes was fired from his job in 1912, after working for 33 years at the school. After this, Anton went to technical college, and the family moved with him to help his cost of study. Here he worked hard, and became a serious student, and focused solely on his education. At the start of the First World War, Anton Mussert signed up to join the Dutch Army, and when he entered training in Amsterdam, the officers did not know what to do with him, due to his height being roughly around 5 feet 2. He was enlisted inside of an artillery regiment, but then in 1915 became ill with a kidney infection, and was released back from the army. During his illness, he was cared for by his aunt Maria, who was 18 years older, and during this time they fell in love. The family were appalled by this, and he fell out with his mother over the marriage he wished to embark on with her sister. They were granted an exemption to marry from the Queen, as it was illegal for people as closely related as they were to be married. After achieving his diploma, he worked as an engineer, and he began to become closely involved in political organisations. He was a member of the Liberal Freedom League, and he later rose to the position of Secretary for the National Committee of Action. This involved work regarding a treaty with Belgium, concerning Dutch waterworks, of which Mussert was opposed to. Mussert in this role was considered a great organiser, and within the National Union, he switched from being a liberal to a fascist. He became a member of the Dietscher Bond, and this organisation hoped that greater Netherlands would be created, including Flemish Belgium. He rose throughout his job as an engineer, and he became the youngest head engineer in the country. Mussert, however, realised he could influence politics too. He began to consider starting a political party, and he became very concerned with the politics of the Netherlands. On the 14th of December 1931, along with ten others and Cornelius van Gielkirchen, Mussert founded the National Socialist Movement in the Netherlands as a counterpart for the Nazi Party. Mussert assumed the role as a Dutch Mussolini, and he was seen to be a good organiser, and his confidence as a leader grew as time went on. 
The movement was based more on Italian fascism than Nazism, and Mussert idolised Mussolini. The NSB, as they were known, implemented a number of the Nazi party's agenda and ideologies, and of their 20 points in their political manifesto, they copied 16 of them from the Nazi policy, with the Führer principle and the eugenics policies left out. The party continued to build and during the elections of 1935, it gained 8% of the vote. The party then began to become more radical and anti-Semitic as time went on, and their support floundered also. As the Second World War broke out, the NSB sympathised with the Germans and supported neutrality for the Netherlands. It was reported in April 1940 that Mussert and his followers were planning a coup and were plotting to kidnap Queen Wilhelmina. On the 10th of May 1940, the Germans invaded the Netherlands, and within a week the Germans had occupied the country, with the Dutch surrendering. Mussert began to organise the suppression of other political parties, with only the NSB remaining in the Nazi occupation. He was not appointed the Prime Minister of the nation, with Arthur Sezenquart becoming the right commissioner, and Mussert was summoned to Berlin to help control the Dutch people and to suppress any resistance. He worked alongside the Gestapo to hunt down any resistors and he had five meetings with Hitler. He wished for the Netherlands to be independent and says in Quart even rallied to Hitler that Mussert should become the Prime Minister, but Hitler would not relent. Mussert was made the leader of the Dutch people, a title that carried very little power. There were more pro-German members of his party and his influence did not carry much power, with others having more sway. He did oversee Dutch members of the NSB, training with the SS to militarise them, and he created the Dutch SS as a division of the NSB. He also oversaw the formation of the 24th SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Division Nederland, which was recruited in the Netherlands, and they then trained in Hamburg. The unit saw service on the Eastern Front and fought alongside the Germans. He seemed like a man who was keen to win over Hitler, but he could not do so, and it was clear that within the Netherlands, the Germans were the key power, with even those men who formed the SS division and the army division being passed over to the German military's leadership. His dream for an independent Dutch government, loyal to Hitler but independent, would not come whilst the war was going on. Hitler stated that the Dutch people should not be considered conquered, as he did value them and regarded them as Aryans. Within the Netherlands, as the Second World War continued, the Dutch people were experiencing a period of continued hardship, especially towards the end of the conflict, with many areas suffering huge food shortages. Mussert was concerned that the Germans were thriving, but the Dutch were not, and he believed this was down to the work of Hitler's inner circle, and in particular, Heinrich Himmler. In 1943, many male members of the NSB had been conscripted into the Landwehr an SS division that fought on both the Eastern and Western Front, and even fought in the Netherlands against the Allies. These men also helped the government to control the population inside of the country, but as 1944 came, it was clear that at some point the Netherlands would fall. The NSB expected this to happen following the Normandy invasions, and in particular after the capture of Antwerp in September 1944. The following day, many members of the NSB's leadership fled towards Germany, and the party's hierarchy fell apart. At the time also, the Nazis banned food transport by rail, resulting in the Hunger Winter, where 18,000 people died from starvation. During this, Mussert remained very quiet, and was fearful of losing his power, and the NSB simply crumbled. He gave his final political speech on the 7th of April 1945, but within a few weeks, he was involved in a car crash. His car smashed into a Wehrmacht truck and he was injured. A plan was made inside the hospital as an armed resistance group planned to kidnap him, but the plot was foiled. Whilst he was in hospital, the war was virtually declared over in Europe with the death of Adolf Hitler and Mussert made an announcement honouring the dead leader of Germany. He travelled to the NSB office in The Hague and then told police of his location and he gave himself up, with the German occupation of the Netherlands in tatters. He was arrested at half past three on the afternoon of the 7th of May 1945. At 7pm, he was taken away and transferred to prison, 
but shortly after his arrest, he was charged with high treason. He was accused of attempting to bring the country under foreign rule, assisting the enemy, and also attempting to change the constitutional government. He strongly tried to defend himself, but it was of no use. The question as what to do with Anton Musa was made, but the court found him completely guilty of treason, and for this, he was sentenced to death. The sentence was announced on the 12th of December 1945, and he then tried to appeal the death sentence. He failed and the judgment was confirmed, and he also requested to be pardoned, but this was also rejected. The execution date was set for Tuesday the 7th of May, a year exactly from his arrest. When the day arrived at 6am, he was collected by the commander of the prison, where he was being kept in The Hague. After this, he left his prison cell for the final time. Mussert, along with his brother-in-law, a priest and two guards, then made their way towards the prison vehicle, where they were loaded onto and transported to Vars Dorp per Vlatka. This is an open-air June, where during the Second World War, it's estimated that up to 280 members of the Dutch resistance were killed by the Germans. In a twist of events, the Junes would be the site of one more execution, the man who collaborated with the Nazi occupiers. The firing squad for Anton Mussert's execution had already been gathered and were being readied before the condemned arrived, and at 6.27am, Mussert arrived and got out of his vehicle. It parked close to the dunes, where he would be executed, and then within three minutes of arriving, he was dead. Once he got out of the car, final checks were made, and he was then led over to the firing squad, where he was secured, and then the firing squad were prepared. It's assumed that he would have been tied to a post to prevent him escaping and running, and once they were ready, the firing squad shot straight into him, killing Anton Mussert instantly. At 6.30am, he was executed, just three minutes after arriving at the site of execution. Afterwards, his body was buried anonymously in the General Cemetery in The Hague. However, his sister was visited by the police in 1956 and asked where his body was. The night before, on the 16th of June, his body had been stolen and was missing. A newspaper was informed that his remains had been dug up and taken away, and the group who did it knew what they were doing. Amongst all of the burials, only Mussert's coffin was taken away. The government didn't entirely know what had happened too, but it's believed that at least four unknown members of the NSB and ex Eastern Front soldiers stole his body and then reburied it in one of their gardens. Where the remains of Anton Mussert today remains still a mystery. Anton Mussert was seemingly a power-hungry man who wished to rule as a dictator in the Netherlands. However, he was never viewed by other dictators such as Hitler as a man capable of doing so. He was a man who collaborated with the Nazi government and with Hitler, but was repaid with very little power and a title that held no significant authority. Overall, it was the Nazis who called the shots in the Netherlands during the occupation, with Mussert just a puppet figure. His execution was a significant one, but it's one that's forgotten when we look at the deaths of prominent figures inside of the Second World War. Ultimately to the Dutch people, who were suffering towards the end of the conflict, he was a traitor who was in the pockets of the brutal Nazi occupiers. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.